Good morning, Mount Zion.
Can we please all stand for the doxology? Holy, holy, holy. Put on their best threads and their highest heels. <laughs> <laughs> and 
That's at 3.30 p.m. at the J.R. Smith Center, 1723 Bruton Boulevard. If you need a ticket, you can see one of the elders, and they'll be happy to assist you. Amen. Um, let's see. Whole Woman, October 21st, 2023. Okay, I know, uh, because you can't get no weapon. Why are you dragging all them bags like that? That's what Sister Veronica says. It's a conference where y'all can let go some of that baggage because y'all know we do be holding some stuff. Zip it up and won't let it out. Amen. That, um, if you need information for that, it's at www.dormovement.com. Amen. In November, nope. October 22nd, that's the Sunday after the whole woman, we are at Tangelo Baptist Church at 4 p.m. What colors do we wear? Blue. <laughs> I got on blue and blue today. Um, and then on November 21st, we have Feed the Family Program for seniors ages 55 and up. The deadline is November 12th, and there will be $25 gift cards. Amen. Also, December 17th, we have gift cards for the kids. Um, on November 5th, We'll be at Have, Re Have Faith Outreach Ministries with Pastor Randy Calhoun and Lady Ruth Calhoun at 3.30. That's the anniversary service. We're wearing our church colors. What color that is? <laughs> On December 2nd at 10 a.m., the Zion Project will be at Wood Ridge Apartments to pass out mental health information. Also, new members class starts next month, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Sunday. You have any, you need, got any questions, see Sister Dream. She got the garden and put a shirt on in the back. And on October 15th, we'll be at Open Door Ministries, 643 Coke Avenue in Winter Garden. It'll be at 4 o'clock. It's the Pastor Appreciation for Pastor Gregory B. Clay. Amen. Y'all got that? If you need any, uh, y'all y'all missed the announcement, y'all can see me or Minister Shaw after service and we'll get you that information. So do we have any visitors today? If so, please stand so we can acknowledge you. Whoop, whoop. Amen. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Good morning, Mount Zion. Y'all know what we do. Listen, listen. Special way we walk our Lord here at Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church, all right? So just sit back and relax and go sing this morning. Come on, y'all. Say it. One, two, three. The song says it's good to sing it. Come on. It says, welcome to the service of the Lord. And listen, welcome to Mount Zion.
believe God is doing something great. Y'all seem a little quiet today. Y'all had a rough Saturday. Go to stay more. Oh, we can build up a little bit. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus. As you see, we're doing some major renovations in here. Right. You know, we like the floor. Get in there, huh? Get in there. Yeah. 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 Just coming along. Amen. Yeah. We're doing the audio area. We got some other things we'll be changing over the week as we try to give you guys a more uh, pleasurable place to be. Amen. 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 We're going to do excellence, so we won't do it at all. Amen. Amen. So when you come here, have your praise ready. Amen. We should be supplementing. I can't pump and prime me every week. Amen. Yeah. Pastor get tired too. Yeah. Amen. So if you got a little something with you, I got a little something with me. See back in bed, right? So we put a little something together. Yeah. Somebody, you got a little chicken, I got a little rice, right? Yeah. Y'all ain't never do. Y'all the most, the most holiest people I've ever seen. Y'all ain't never go to the club. Y'all ain't do the all white party. Y'all ain't do the two drop, two for ones. And I remember it. Hey, man. I was in church. Liar. God's doing some great things. We ask for your continued prayers um, for the Alls family. Uh, uh, actually, Pastor Alls had to leave. They had to meet with um, uh, Lady Alls' um, mother's pastor. So they have some things going. Uh, we're going to need those who can and will help us on Saturday, the 30th. Uh, it's an early 11 o'clock. Who's going to the uh, fashion show? Amen. 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 What? I'll be dressed to impress. Who want to go? Well, nobody want to go? The babies want to go. Wow. Okay, baby. We want to go with that. Ain't no grown folks that like to go a, a nice couple. Richard, how about you and your wife? Would you like to take her to something nice? Yeah, just nod your head, yes. But she don't take her nowhere, she told me. I'm putting him on Front Street. She like, I ain't got nothing to do with that now. That grown folk talk. I know you got a lot going. You think you can sneak? What time is it, 4 o'clock? You think you can sneak away, Richard and Brenda, to the Smith Center? I got you two tickets paid for. Amen? You and your wife. Amen. Uh, so your son and your daughter, y'all watch TV or play video games. Mama going out. Can mama go out by herself? Susanna, you don't mind going by yourself. You're going to be okay. You got separation anxiety. You wait till she meet cubs. Y'all, y'all, y'all keep pouring everything I got into y'all kids. Amen? I'm not saying you shouldn't be there for them and support them and love them, but you better understand when they start getting their own groups, their own circles. Okay. You sitting there on your birthday, and they, hey, mama, happy birthday. We got to go somewhere else, though. Y'all be like, they thought they loved me. Is that Sister Gordon? Bless you. Good to see you. Sister Gordon's in the house. How I many of God's going to do something great? Amen. This first lady here? Okay, she's on the way. She had a crazy day at work yesterday. Um, I want you to prepare your hearts for, for this offering today. Amen? Amen? And I want you to start asking yourself, as I grow in God, do I grow in my presence? I mean, do I, am I showing up? Am I being in place? Am I growing in my prayers? Is my prayer life, am I getting stronger in my prayer life? And in my provisions, am I giving 
as I grow? Does my giving, does my growing cause me to give more? This ain't about money, it's about value. The more you value God, the more you should do with your God. Am I, am I looking at it wrong? If I believe I really love God, it ought to show, shouldn't it? Amen? I keep telling my wife I love her, but I don't take her nowhere. And I don't do nothing for her. How long do you think that's going to last? Before I have to shoot Bo Diddley in my front yard. Because I got issues. But anyway, I ain't going to let that happen because I'm going to love my wife to everything that I have. Amen? So those are can and will. If you want to give an electronic payment, you'll stand and walk right to the back, hall, back hallway. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, fair. What is your son? Can you write that? Can you write that? Take out uh, your son. Show him what to do, dream. Amen. 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 If you have an electronic payment, please step to the back. Those have an envelope. If you need the envelope, tithe and offering, please raise your hand. Our ushers will get it to you. We will now turn it over to our ushers. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's up to you. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. fertile soil, oh God. Bless all those that had to give 30, 60, 100. Father, I pray an unlimited full return that shall hit the lives of your people. We thank you, and they already blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Alright, how we feeling, y'all? How we feeling? We feeling very present, y'all? Alright then. Alright, now we got our scriptures from Cameron. Oh, come on and bless the name of the Lord. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. You can do better than that. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. 
Listen, we're going to do an old familiar scripture, one that my mother used to uh, make me read every night before bed. Every night. Every night, Pastor. Psalms 1. I think y'all know it. And if you would rest on your feet for the reading of God's word. Amen. So it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the, his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like a shaft with the wind drives away. Therefore, let me go back. That was all on memory, y'all. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sit in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But whatsoever he do, but the way of the ungodly shall never perish. God bless you. Now, if y'all don't mind, can we 
please stand and can we please rise and get ready to praise the Lord. All right. All right. I'll take out.
was reading it, God said, you going to preach that? I had something else, but we ain't going to preach that right now. cross to his competent yet still the Holy Spirit. I honor you today to our guests who come and decided not Robert and will be with us. We pray you are experiencing not just the presence but the power of the Lord. To the best church my side of him.
old song my grandma used to sing, Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Y'all don't remember that? Come on. They lost. Walk with me. Come on.
So I lay back with ill-gotten thoughts, anger on my heart, and want to wake up in the morning with joy. It ain't going to work. Your mind is torn. How can you be whole when you're walking around in pieces? How? How can you be whole when you walk around in pieces? He tells us here. He said, blessed is the man. First, he says that not walking in the council of the godly. First of all, how can I walk this way? I'm glad you asked, my man. I got to walk in correctness. I want you to ask yourself, how much time do you take correcting the things you do know that are not right? I know you talked about it. You, know, you call some friends on the phone and gossip about it. But how much time did you take to actually correct the issue that you have? And it is amazing how when something is upon us, Sister Pat, when we don't like something, we can't get off it. We're running to five different people in five different places to bring up the same conversation. About what somebody, something, or someplace did to you. Uh -huh. But when you done something to somebody else, you'll pass ten people and never bring it up. I'm by myself on that. God is saying, I need you to start self-evaluating about how you operate with me so you can learn how to operate with others. You get me the quality time with me, and I'll give you the quality time you need that you'll be able to deal with others in a righteous manner. You got to walk his way. But you got to walk in correctness. You got to know when something don't look right. I used to tell people, don't let your good talk back if you can. Don't let your good. We can have good intentions, Jay Corn, but it don't look right. Y'all not catching this. We can be people, places, and things to other folk, but it don't look right. Because God has said, I made you a beacon of light for a reason. And you, because your light, it shines. It draws not just the good around folk, but it also draws the bad. He says, walk in correctness. And that's what he's saying. How do you have godly counsel and not be correct? Well, most of us want to out counsel the counselor. I, I, I tell my children sometimes, and it's not because I'm the adult and they the child. It's because you're hearing me, but you're not listening. When I give you counsel, I don't need feedback. I want you to process what I'm saying because some things I don't have the time. Y'all not catching this. Now, when we got time to sit and talk about it and discuss it, we'll sit and talk about it and discuss it. But you got to understand, Rick, when your boss gives you a timeline to do something, he's not going to sit there all day long and timeline it through you. When we was in the military, they gave us an order. He said, right, face, left, preparatory command, get ready, execution, face. You didn't have time. Because if you got it wrong, they pull you out of line. And they made an example out of you. What I'm trying to say here, if we're going to walk right in the Lord, we're already living examples that we cannot afford to keep making trivial mistakes in front of people over and over and over. They say, well, the Lord know my heart. The devil is a liar. We got to accept responsibility to who we're supposed to be as living vessels, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. Do I got somebody saying that? to be reminded that all the stuff that was hidden from us, our children now have access to. They know more about stuff than we do. You think I'm wrong? Go look at your child homework. 
Sixth grade. Fifth grade. What that is? That's my all right, mama. What? Man, we're gonna get you a tutor. Mama ain't gonna get hit. Daddy, I can't count nothing but my money, baby. I got that hot down, but I'm not gonna be able to do all that extra. Thing. What's the X and the Y and the pie? What kind of pie? Sweet potato pie? What kind of pie are you talking about? Keep on pie, keep getting pie. What kind of pie are you talking about? This man, what kind of pie are you talking about? I don't know about the triangle. What kind of triangle? It's about like a square. We, we, all that's going on now. See, these children also have access to other things that are not of God. And they're demonstrating them publicly in front of other people. And they still have to walk. Young folk, those of you who believe that you believe God got his hand on you. You got to start asking yourself, what kind of example do I set for my younger brothers and sisters? Do they really watch what I do? Do they watch what I say and how I operate? Or are they just doing whatever they want to do? How can I correct them when all they see is wrong in me? For those of us who are a little older. What's your prayer life look like? Prayer corrects the order of the atmosphere. Prayer corrects the order of the atmosphere. And see, prayer runs in line with the word, my quote. Check this out. Prayer. Like the word is past, present, and future all at the same time. When you pray, God corrects past mistakes, works in the current situation you're in, and begins to remove things of the future that will hinder you from loving him. But if I have not a prayer, what I walk into, I'm supposed to walk into. Y'all catching this? I'm catching what I'm catching because I've not put myself in a position for God to move it in another place that I don't have to deal with it. Oh, I'm walking into it alone. And I don't know about you, but I would rather have the discipline of God than the distance from God. I don't want God quiet on me. Do I got it? Blood wash, believe it, at least follow back and say, Lord, I know that you want to be with me, so I want to be with you. Lord, I know you want to take care of me, so I want to be able to be taken care of. Lord, I know you want to speak to me, so I want to be able to be spoken to. I won't. Then he says, no one standeth in the way of sinners. Uniquely, uniquely. Blessed. Are we talking about a blessed man now? Not any man. A blessed man. I say this sometimes, God. I don't mean no disrespect. I don't mean to sound arrogant. I had a blessed opportunity last week. Thank you, Lord. I was at a public meeting. And myself and another person were in the midst of a conversation with the, with the town hall people about a certain position. And we were back and forth. And I was giving my answers, he was giving his answers. And I, he was giving his answers, and I was. And after a while, the Lord said, You know what? Enough is enough. Now it's time to separate you from the fold. And I said, I hear you, Lord. And I got up and I said, ladies and gentlemen, no disrespect to my fellow candidate here. But everything I've done, I've succeeded in because I tried. And everything I've done, I've tried in excellence. And what I'm trying to do is bring some excellence to whoever else want to be a part of excellence. Because mediocre don't work for me. And I want to start having some people in this building start realizing that you can't come in with mediocre prayers and mediocre worship and mediocre praise. You got to start figuring out how to build up what God has in you. Because you're going to meet people who have less praise and worship and prayers in you. But I'm looking for you to be a conduit to fire them up and build inside of them what they need to be great enough. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you have the potential 
for purpose. He talks right here in the text. Look what he says. He says, No standing in the way of sinners. How do you stand in the way of a sinner? By not being holy. He told Moses to correct the Old Testament. He said, before you come and step right here, I need you to do something. What did he say? So take your shoes off. Take what off? Because the place where you're standing is holy ground. Take your sandals off. Take your shirt. Take your hat off. Take your shoes off. Take your coat off. Take your shoes off. What are y'all walking in? When you come before God, what's on your shoe? What you don't step in that causes you to not have the right order with God? All right. All right. Why are you so afraid to get before God with what He gave you instead of what you put on? Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. He gave you these. Uh -huh. You don't need those. They're for another place and another time. Uh -huh. If you can't even use what I gave you, what good are those? And this is the mindset I want you to start having. The only covering you need is God. And if you let God cover you, he will correct you. And if you don't feel corrected, you, don't must, you must not be converted. Because there is no conversion without conviction. Are you mad and wrong? That's good. Do it now. Are you angry and wrong? He says now you must walk in direction. Where you stand, there is a position God is facing you. And he wants you to know that you're going to be necessary, you're going to be needed. But you got to put away all that drama that didn't come from your mom. You put it on you. You can blame her, but you put it on you. Because I refuse to let anything that's happened to me in my life be my God. God is my God. Not a drug I took, not an alcohol I smoked, not a woman I messed with, y'all not catching this. Ain't nothing gonna separate me from the love of the Lord. I made my own mistakes, but thank God, he's the one that can make them all miracles. Do I got the miracle workers in the room? Pride went to laugh at about his head. God is who he said that he is, and he will take care of me. I'm almost out of here. That's what he said. No one said it. In the seat of the scornful. Sit up when you want to talk to God. 
I remember there was a little thing back when I was a, when I was a uh, young boy. They said, "Stanley, Stanley, strong and able, keep your elbows off the table." You had to have a certain posture about how you ought to come unto God, and, and maybe just maybe I've been taking God for granted. I've been telling Him what's wrong, but I've been trying to live right. I've been saying what's been bothering me, but I've been really dealing with the inner part of me that keeps me from God. Because when I realize how important God wants to use me and how necessary and needed I am, I begin to build up a new thing about me that requires me to say, I want to So how you see? Because in order to walk, you got to stand up. We gotta quit sitting on God. Because we ain't have no daddy. We gotta quit sitting on God. Because something happened to us when we were 12 and 14 years old. I'm not taking it away from you. I'm acknowledging it happened. But we're gonna quit giving it the power that it don't deserve. What God is going to do with me is cleaning me up and making me fresh and putting me in a place of, of, of accountability so I can be a blessing to somebody else. That's what's going to make me greater. Me sitting around hoping somebody feels sorry for me is never going to get me nowhere. Do I not have any confident Christians that to say, I want greater in my life? Yes, I know that something happened to me, but I quit giving it the power of the power rest. All power rest in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for my sin. So, he's saying, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But this is what I love about verse 2. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doeth he meditate day and night. That means that no matter whether it's good or bad, God will follow his own law. If he said that he'll take care of you, he's going to always take care of you. If he says he'll be with you, he's going to always be with you. About a man that had to take a walk some 40 and two generations ago. Now they said the distance of this walk was about a good 200 yards. And he had to carry a cross that weighed about 300 pounds. I heard as he walked down this road, oh God, people were running at him, people were throwing rocks at him. People were spitting on him. Folk was hitting him. The Roman soldiers was beating him all across his back. But I heard the Lord say, walk this way. Got to the cross where they put it in the ground. Put him up to the sixth and the ninth hour. There he lay with a nail in one hand and one in the other. But between the feet, y'all know it, don't you? He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel, a bright and morning star. I heard that same God that did it for you, he did it for me. Yeah! And then, when it was all over, seven power seconds, he dropped his hand down in the lumps of his shoulder. He died! And the world got dark, the, the moon red like blood. He died. The earth uh, really rocked like a drunken man. He died. So you and I could give a praise and a shout. Yeah. All they tried it. There he lay. Making it right. All they sounded it. Turning the righteous, but early, early, Sunday morning, he got up with some power. He got up with most power. And if you believe that the Lord is changing your life, get on your feet, put a 
praise her. Say, Lord, I need a favor. I want you to come by and see if I'm a kid. Lord, go by. Check on mama. Check on daddy. Check on sus. Check on brother. Go by my job. Go by my house. Go by my school.
Bible says that the people of Egypt began to grow and multiply. Pharaoh got scared. So people began to tell him, the more we do to them, the more they become. So Pharaoh put in a decree. He wanted to kill all firstborn babies. All sons. He wanted to take it out. Because he was afraid of what they were going to become. And see what we miss about being a baby is the purity in a child. The innocence in a child. That somewhere along the way we lose that innocence. Because we begin, we begin to gain knowledge. And we begin to think we're smarter. And we think more highly of ourselves than we should. Because see, babies don't hide how they feel. First lady, you want to, I want you to come and pray with our children today. Lord, we come before your throne of grace. Lord, we come humbly, but we come boldly. Dear God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch these youth right now, dear God. Touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Anything that's not of you, anything that ails their body, anything that's on their mind, anything that's trying to attack them, we bind it right now under the blood of Jesus. God, you said what we bind on earth, so shall it be bound on heaven. So God, we name it and we claim the victory over them right now in the name of Jesus. Walk with them, God. Talk with them. Be that voice of reasoning for them, dear God. Open up their minds that they're able to understand and comprehend everything that be, they're being taught in their school and in their classes, dear God. God, guide their minds that they're able to make the right decisions, dear God. Lord, Lord, those that are athletic, God, we ask you to touch their bodies, Father. Give them the ability and the agility to do the things that they didn't even know that they could do, Father God. And let them walk off of these fields and out of these auditoriums victorious, dear God. And with no, no scratches or no injuries or no broken bones, dear God, cover them, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. God, our scholars that are up here right now, open up their minds, dear God. Let them be able to obtain and sustain the information that they have, dear God, so that they can use it later in life, dear God. And God, we just thank you. Touch them, God. Touch them, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you because, God, you told us in your word to raise up a child the way that they should go, Father. So we are trying our best to raise them, God. And God, when they are adults, we ask you to let them continue on that path called righteousness. And let their children continue on that path as well, dear God. Break any and everything that tries to come against them right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you and we praise you. And we ask this in all things in your Son, Christ Jesus' name. And let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's have together your love God today. Let me see. Amen. Anyway, we want to thank you for being with us today. <laughs> We'd love to acknowledge our, our guest who was uh, with us today. We'll give you an opportunity. Um, if you would like to, sir, we'd love to hear from you. If you... Amen. God bless you. Welcome. Thank you for coming with us today. Amen. My brother, you... I guess you'd like to. My name is Sam. I'm the Amen. Yes, sir. He's an awesome club. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. Welcome anytime, please. Amen. 
So listen, uh, the bus will be leaving about 3.15 today. If you're going to catch our bus, uh, 3.15 today, we'll be leaving today. Those who can or will go with us, uh, I really hope you all can make that trip. Uh, this will be some very special announcements that are going to be given there. I really need my church represented as strong as possible. Amen? Amen. 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 So, I have final news, do I? So I am blessed to say that I have been <clears throat> given an opportunity to be a blessing in another place. So I will be retiring from the Shadows Office. <laughs> Be the new police chief of Eatonville. So, God is extending our territory. Yes, sir. So, I need you in place. I can't say that enough. I need you in place. Please help me make this world a better place. Will you do that for me? Will you do that for me? Will you do that for me? Amen. Amen. So as we stand for our final prayer, let the church say amen. Amen. Thank you. 